getting to a site on foot is always ideal because it's the easiest way to collect or catch a dragonfly. Even after 35 years, I still find them interesting and a challenge. Try to get one in your net that's flying at 30 miles an hour over the water. <laughs> you know, that's the challenge. And it's just fun. It's, we like to say, good, clean fun. Odinate is the short word for dragonflies, and I think they can act as great ambassadors for indicators of a healthy ecosystem. When I first moved to Rhode Island in the early 1990s, I came in with 10 years of work on dragonflies and damselflies, and I asked some biologists, so where should I go? Oh, you have to go to the park, to the watershed. You have to go to the Wood River, the Queens River, the Beaver River. All the other watersheds are great, but this watershed is different. The more species we find in an area, we can generally assume that area is a healthy ecosystem. When we broke the state of Rhode Island up into equal-sized hexagonal units, we had four categories for, the, for ranges of number of species, and red was the highest number. And there's this cluster of red units in the southwest part of Rhode Island. It's the Pocket Watershed. When we look back at the data, it told us, yep, this is the place to be. This watershed is fantastic. You kayak by houses on the river, and I think to myself, do people know what's in this river? I want people to be able to experience the watershed, but I also want people to know how fragile it is. You know, I think having a wild and scenic designation would be huge and hopefully it will further the conservation movement and the education movement. You know, I, I like seeing people in kayaks on the river, but I also want people to know that what we do on the river can be harmful to it, even, even if it's in a protected landscape and that these places are still pretty fragile, still pretty fragile.